in our minds. It exists in our minds. Hi. Hi. Speaking of it existing in your mind, how much how much of it does actually exist? Well, the, the, does the flare actually exist? The, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, it totally exists. It says there's, there's seven novels by T.J. Whitford. The first one is The Moon and the Sun at Night, and it tells a story about a solar flare that hits the Earth, wipes out all technology, all electricity, and everyone's memories, except for one person who remembers everything. And he also knows that things aren't the way they were. In every family, there's a new memory, whether it's a child or some elderly or something. He knows that there's these newcomers that are invading the families. He knows the truth. No one believes him. That's the flair. It was a very, it's a really exciting show. Yeah. Um, and I'm hoping that, that we'll, we'll make a lot more of it. That could actually be a exciting show. It though. is a hit show. It is a hit show. Uh, well, well, when we did, when we went to Fox and we pitched the show, we really, I mean, we worked uh, very hard on breaking out the entire story of the flair. Yeah. We pitched the flair. I think they would have preferred to do the flair. <laughs> then what just happened? But no, no, no. We want to do a, a, a silly uh, after show. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's probably a terrible choice. And they have more detail. I mean, they really, they really have a vibe for it and, and and what the show is. So the flair exists. Yeah. Yeah, it really does. Yeah, we haven't shot it all, but it exists. Yeah. And that's why when parts of it, that it exists. That's why when John said, like, "I'll do it," we were like, "Oh my God, it's going to be real." Like, so we didn't we didn't want it to be winky. We didn't want it to be a joke. We wanted to take it very seriously. And I know that and that's why I got involved because you know if if you want to do the kind of the wink wink this is a comedy I was like I, I don't know if I have the talent to do that but you want a straight up drama sci fi and you and all we have to do is the last two minutes I'm in I mean that, that would be like fun so and it, it was it, it really was fun to do and the actors same thing I mean all the actors we got they had to commit to this it wasn't going to be like a jokey version it had to really be and the, you know we had scenes in the rain and. You know, all those fights and yeah. crying and the whole deal, and they were all in. They were like, as if this was a real show. It was kind of cool to see. Yeah. So how much did you tell them, though? I mean, like, did they have a big book that tells them what the player is about? We had yeah. some actors who wanted to know from beginning to end what the story is about. Yeah. Some of them just like, just tell me what to do, John. <laughs> I trust you, John. You'll make me By the way, is, on, is the same on any show I've ever done. Yeah. <laughs> some people want to know everything. Some people just like, just tell me what's happening in the scene. Uh, so that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Sherry Appleby was our first actor that agreed to do the show. She actually did a remote piece before that's right. yeah. any of her scenes. So we knew, all right, we have some, we're building the cast. John was the first, well, person on the flare that we knew could make the flare real. But Sherry, I don't Thing still has doesn't know <laughs> where the book. She's like, I'm just having fun. I'm happy. I'm shooting in L.A. John's great. Um, and then Kevin, when he came on board, he wanted to know from beginning to end who the show is, who the character. And luckily, we had talked about it, so all that conversation we had was <laughs> wasn't completely useless. But it was great. But I was like, a guy I like Kevin, a guy like John, they're so in. Which I remember this. I got the email saying, um, John would like in his contract that when the flare does turn real, that he directs. I'm like, yes. That's absolutely like, of true. Of course we do. Kevin the same way. He's like, I want, I want to be in the show when it turns real. Yeah. That's the kind of commitment and belief in it that is yeah. why I think this, that's why it's so real when you watch it. Yeah. It's it also is. also based on the idea it really is good. Like, you just heard it. It's yeah. a great pitch. I'd but watch they that show. To me. Right away, I'd be like, yeah, I'd watch that. That's yeah. a good show. When I we, can see the twists and turns. That would be great. When we, very, when we first pitched it with Fred, and Fred sort of pitched out the first cold open, which turned out to be the second one. And the man I've been pitching shows since we came out to LA 20 years ago. We thought we were good, and then you see Fred pitching. He's a he's an actor and a performer, and he sold it. And we realized how horrible we had it. <laughs> but at the end of his pitch, which was dead serious and dramatic, the head of Fox at the time looked at us and said, "I want to do that show." And we said, "No, no, we want to do this comedy." After he said, "Okay, fine." So we probably should have sold the flair then, John. But we're not good at the business. <laughs> No, we're really not. Um, but yes, um, contracts have to do when you do it. Yes, so. So, John's <laughs> Tell yeah. you so how much of the after show is written and how much of it is the improv? Yeah. 
you know what? A large part of it is we we really do want to make sure that it's a, you know that the show is really well structured. Um, there's room to play in it for sure, and the interviews are not scripted, except for the scripted parts of the interviews. Um, it is it is a little weird because when people are watching it, I think people are a little confused as to what's real and what's fake. Um, and that's a little bit by design. I think it's fun to sit there and be like, I don't know if you're messing with me or if you're being honest. Um, I think that's true for all like reality TV too. When you watch, you're like, oh, wait a minute, are the producers? What's yeah, going they on? Set this up. They set this up. Yeah, <laughs> it also depends on who's in the scene. Fred does a scene with Tyler Ritter, who has just found out he's been killed off of the flare mm-hmm. live. I don't know if you saw that episode. Yes. And so that scene was scripted to a point. Tyler's a great performer. Fred knows what he's doing. He's a great performer. And they got on and, and did their thing. And we knew the beats. He's going to find out he's having a baby. He's going to find out he's having twins. And so that didn't need to be as scripted as when in one episode Keller his co-host parents come and they don't see Fred as the host but they see their daughter and that was probably scripted from beginning to end so I I guess the answer is we don't know (laughs) but the the great thing is too again because being on a show like 24 we went through all of this so we killed a lot of our characters off and the actors had that same reaction (laughs) when they died no one no one ever wants to be killed off the show I'll just tell you that right now so to actually show that I thought was brilliant because people don't ever get to see that part of it that (laughs) these are human beings that just lost their jobs I know they're characters that die in the show but in the reality part of it they have no work anymore so so it's actually very interesting to like you know see that did you see that at table reads did people learn oh we we had a real problem on 24 because because what happens is that the crew gets the script well before the actors do because we're in the prep and and they're still messing with the script the last second so the the cast gets to laugh well you know the crew would just walk down the hall and look at a guy and go, oh, dude, sorry. <laughs> and then the cops would go, what? <laughs> what happened to me? It's like, oh, tough. you got shot in the head in the next episode. And they'd be really depressed. So then I had to virtually go to the writers and go, you can't do this anymore. You have to call and tell the guy he's going to die. That's you got to give him a warning. You can't, oh, you can't find out from the props guy that yeah. he's going to die. <laughs> like, so someone had to make that ugly call. It's like a horrible call to make. We killed uh, people off that were on the show for three years. Oh, yeah. You know, and they would just die in the middle of the season like not knowing and they all had this like belief that oh they've got me hired for like 12 episodes I'm good yeah. but we kill people like you know episode 8 of their 12 <laughs> they wouldn't see it coming so so that's why I really connected to that because I, I lived through it oh, that's so funny. <laughs> and by the way every, oh, yeah, I would imagine. it's not it's not fun <laughs> that's really funny. how easy is it to get like guest stars to come on this the hardest part has been we filmed the show in Chatsworth <laughs> and legit for for celebrities and legitimately we were told at the very beginning it's hard to get an audience so we pay them I guess you can pay an audience and then celebrities are excited to do it they're doing a press tour but Chatsworth is you know it's sort of yeah, it's, I mean, it's where John lives. So that's it's one of the main reasons he got Chatsworth, John. Right? It's close. <laughs> so, oh, that was good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's actually, actually, the funny part is it's the same studio we shot 24 for, oh, for six wow. years. It's the exact same studio. Yeah. So. That's hilarious. So I think people are interested and excited to do it. You can tell when they come off the show, they've gotten to do an interview. So it's sort of a more fun way part of their press tour. And they're part of the storyline. Mm-hmm. Tiffany Haddish is in that episode I told you about, and she's now involved with the parents who are disapproving of Fred. And yeah. Yvette Nicole Brown was in an extreme interview where she's in a glass box so simulating the scene where for, uh, some of the characters from the flare flood in a cave. And so we had a giant ball pit where they slowly submerged in mm-hmm. uh, colorful balls. And she's seen that. She's seriously talking about her dog at that point. Yeah, yeah. she's yeah. talking about her dog. She's <laughs> drowning in balls. Pretty funny. What's the would you love to get on the show? On the flare or on the talk show? On the talk like show. Martin Short. Yeah. So Martin Short is going to yeah, Martin Short and Howard Stern. <laughs> Together. Together. Oh, my again. God. Together again. It'd be so great to reunite those two. <laughs> Who would you like, John? Yeah. yeah. As a yeah. guy like? So you can uh, Kevin Bacon. Oh. oh. But then we'd all be within the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like Kevin Bacon. He's yeah, he's the best. Uh, Tom Cruise. Okay. Tom Cruise. He's, so he's a little busy usually. But no, but he's got to yeah. promote um, Top Gun. Really? That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We did have Vince Gilligan on, which was a pretty exciting. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Well, being Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul fans. 
Uh, he came on and, and he didn't get to say a word though. Brad talked <laughs> it was to him. Unbelievable. It was good fit. Yeah. He didn't say, I don't think he said anything. Hey, really hi, nice to meet you. And then that was it. And that was yeah. it. How high is the production budget for, I mean, because you're actually shooting this series and this thing, so yeah, they give you a lot of. It was a bit tricky, but again, yeah. they, they gave me everything I needed, which really? was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, we had pretty much, I, I pulled my crew from 24. We virtually had the 24 crew, and, and we, we shot it exactly the same. There was no difference. I mean, these guys were on set when we were shooting. It, it was it was seriously straight up. We've so. never seen, been involved in a set. And the amazing thing, the positive byproduct of working with John Cassar, and I highly recommend everyone do it, is for the talk show part, when we said, hey, we need a rehearsal day to rehearse the talk show, Fox said no. We said, hey, can we just have a couple people with a couple cameras so we can block out? They said, you don't have the money. Uh, we called, and they said, that's just, we want to do a low-cost project. And then when we showed up on his set, we had rain machines and light machines. I was like, and it came in them trucks. We, we, had a, we had a nicer trailer on his set than for our own office. I don't know why. And when we asked uh, Edison, our production manager, how did we get this? They said, oh, John called someone, and they just said yes. <laughs> I've got history. I've got history of yeah. yeah. really history. What's the worst thing that's ever been spoiled for you? Since this is all about, don't give away spoilers. Yeah, I like, like on another show, you mean? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I really stay away from it. Like, I don't read and I don't turn my phone on if it's like an episode that I gotta watch. Yeah. Because I, I hate them so much that <laughs> I, I really try not to hit them. I don't know if there's any of that I found out. Mine, mine was my, my wedding because I am. Um, I, 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 this is 100% true. I, I moved my wedding date because I didn't want to ha get married on the day the Phantom Menace came. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah. totally true. Come um, on. No, is that crazy? So I'm like, and my wife was like, that's ridiculous. I'm like, we just do the next weekend, and then she saw the Phantom Menace with me. She's like, This? This is what we move the wedding for. <laughs> well, it's, it's for my wedding. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, is that what you meant? Uh, sure, we'll go with that. Show, yeah. there it is right there. <laughs> I don't think I had anything spoiled. I remember watching uh, The Sixth Sense. Uh, this is the opposite, where you know that moment, the big twist ending, and I heard a lot of people gasping. This was back when I used to get high a lot and see movies. I didn't understand what happened. <laughs> I was, I remember like, I remember everyone gasping, going, oh. I'm like, oh, I cannot wait for someone to explain to me what's going on. <laughs> uh, I've known Dave since high school. Your biggest spoiler, I think, was Cujo, because you thought Cujo was about a rabbit dog. I was very young. <laughs> He thought it was a dog that get bit a, by a rabbit, a rabbit and turned into a rabbit dog. Oh my God. And so he went to the movie and he was so disappointed that the dog never turned into a rabbit. That's yeah. Oh he my did God. chase a squirrel at the beginning. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. the squirrels he's going to chase and then he's going to get ambushed by rabbits. No. <laughs> I, 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 I did think of one that, that was, it was one of the Star Wars movies, like, like Phantom Menace just came out. I remember the hoopla. It's like, oh, Star Wars is back. It was all exciting. Yeah. So I went and bought the soundtrack. Yes. I and I was like, about. I'm listening to the soundtrack. It's great. And you pick up the back and it says the death of. <laughs> yeah. And you go, no! Oh, <laughs> it was too wow. late. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> that was that, unfortunately. Don't buy the soundtrack before you see the movie. <laughs> Way too many clues on the back of that soundtrack. Very good lesson. Yeah. Thanks, you guys, so much. Thank you. Really